Hey traders, welcome back to this channel. In today's video, I want to show you how to identify institutional buying and selling. I want to walk you through five different case studies. I want to break down whether each of these price action represents institutional buying or retail buying or selling. Now, we've gotten a lot of requests about this topic, a lot of questions, and we see that a lot of you love this, and that's why we created uh, this video for you. If you like more videos like this, just leave a comment down below. Let us know that you want more case studies like this, and we can create more case studies like this just for you. So before I go into the case study, I'm going to just do a brief run through of how institutional buying and selling looks like. We have covered this multiple times, but uh, just in case you have not watched this video uh, or any other of our videos, uh, this will you know, give you a refresher and I'll just run it through really quick. Uh, what I'll do at the same time is that I'll provide the link to that video on the top right so that you can check it out uh, if you have not. Okay, that's very useful. That will show you uh, really step by step how to identify institutional buying and selling. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'll give you the criteria in this video, just a very brief run through. Then I show you the comparison between the institutional buying and selling versus uh, a retail buying and selling. Meaning retail traders like you and I, we are buying. Uh, we don't have the um, money, we don't have the capital to move the market. So that results in a price movement that is very slow. It, it's not an explosive move. So I will show you the difference between the two so that uh, you can identify which is which. Okay, then after that, I'll go straight into the five price action case studies, which I'd like you to follow along. I'd like you to pause this video. I'd like you to try to ask yourself, is this institutional buying or is this selling? Right, pause the, pause the video first, apply what you learn, try to figure out, and then, you know, uh, just hit the play button and see if you're correct. Okay, this is just a practice. So hopefully, uh, this will help you a lot. Now, by the way, if you're new to this channel, please give us a thumbs up, okay? Please subscribe. We have a lot of videos like this. We are here to serve you. You can see that we create videos like this every single day. We also have a free day trading guide with a full strategy, step by step, and a, you know, candlestick cheat sheet inside the PDF guide. So it's free. So the link is in the description. Just check that out and download it if you have not. So let's move on into uh, just a very brief introduction of you know, how institutional buying and selling looks like. So you have over here the bullish example and you have the bearish example. So you can see that in the bullish example, you can see that price is very explosive. So the uh, boxes that I have uh, drawn, these are um, what I call institutional buying. Okay, on the left is institutional buying and on the right is institutional selling. So this is how it looks like, and I'll break down the criteria. I'll just do a very rough, uh, you know, brief introduction about uh, the criteria that we look for. So the criteria that we are looking for is that we want to look for a strong departure of a level. So ideally, you have less than six candles before price bursts in a single direction. So if you go back to this, you can look at the, um, the origin of the movement. There's only one candle here. Uh, there's only about two candles here or perhaps three over here you can uh, about you know two candles here and over here you have about um, probably four candles here so you can see that uh, there's strong departure of the level and price does not stay at that level for very long okay it's less than six candles so that's the first criteria the second criteria is that you have a large extended range candle in one direction so what do i mean by large extended range candle i mean that the candle closes near the high or low so if you go back to this example you can see that a lot of the candles are closing near the high you can see this one is closing at the high of course it's not all but uh, just generally if you see a lot of candles that are uh, you know are closing near the high or low then uh, that's a very good sign that this is a um, institutional buying or selling. So you can see uh, all these examples that I'm just uh, highlighting for you over here. Not to worry if you, you're still not clear because when I break down the uh, case study for you, 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 hopefully you can understand, right? You go through the process and I'll do it five times so that uh, if you are really confused, you can go through each of these uh, examples and hopefully that will help uh, clarify any misunderstanding that you might have. Now, the last criteria is you want majority of the candles uh, to be bullish or bearish. So in a bullish in, uh, you know, institutional buying situation, you want majority of the candles to be um, 
in this case green. Okay, my candles are green, bullish is green, red is uh, bearish. So in this case, you can see that uh, bullish case, you see a lot of green candles. Uh, in this case, you only have one red candle. Uh, conversely, if you look at the bearish side, it's the opposite. You have a lot of uh, red candles and only one, um, one green candle over here. And uh, over here, you only have one green candle and then you start seeing all red candles. So these are the three criteria. I will go uh, you know, into that later, so not to worry if you are still a bit confused. So let's talk about the comparison between institutional buying and selling versus uh, retail buying and selling. Early on, I break down uh, what institutional buying and selling looks like. I gave you the criteria, but I just want to contrast this with the retail side, you know, the retail side of uh, buying and selling. Uh, how does it look like? so that you can you know, have a comparison between the two. I think this is very helpful for you. So I, I put this in. So the first thing that you want to know about retail buying is that uh, retail traders like you and I, we do not have large capital. We are not entering 500 lots. So when we buy, we don't really move price. But when institutional players buy, they move price in a very explosive manner. So if you see there's a very weak departure of a level, and you see that price is really struggling at that level. There's a big fight going on. There are more than six candles you know, at the base, um, at the origin of the movement. Then uh, that is more of a retail buying. You also will see plenty of doji candles with a lot of indecision because the market is not decisive and none of us have the capital to move price in a big manner. You, you will also see a good mix of bullish and bearish candles. So unlike institutional buying and selling where you know, the, the, the movement is very clear and you have all you know, bullish candles or bearish candles, uh, in this case, you will see a very uh, mixed um, candles. You see bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, bearish, so on and so forth. You do not see a very clear departure. So you see a very slow departure of the level and it has a mixture of bullish and bearish candles. So hopefully, uh, you know, this clears up how a retail uh, buying looks like and the case study will help you really understand what I mean. So let's go into the case study for today. This is case study number one. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause this video right now and ask yourself based on uh, what was taught over here. Ask yourself, you know, is this institutional or retail selling? Okay, in this case, we are talking about selling because our price went down. So Make a guess, okay, pause this video if you need to. Okay, hopefully you've done that. You, you pause the video and you, you, you know, try to use, use what I uh, covered earlier in this video. Now, the answer to this question is actually it is an institutional selling. Let me break it down for you. Over here, you can see that um, there's strong departure of the level. You can see that price departed quite uh, nicely off the level. You have only about three candles uh, consolidating before price uh, took off. So that's a good sign that there's institutional um, selling there. You also have large bearish extended range candles. Uh, this candle over here close near the bottom. This candle close near the bottom. This candle close near the bottom. And in this entire move down, you can see that majority of the candles are bearish. You only see one very small bodied, uh, you know, bullish candle and another one over here. But majority of the candles are bearish. So in this case, this is institutional selling. So hopefully that's clear. Let's move on to case study number two. As, as what we did previously, I want you to pause this video, ask yourself, is this institutional buying or selling? Okay, if you need to rewind the video and rewatch the criteria over here, uh, you, can, you, know, you can write this down, you can take some notes and uh, just go through this uh, thing. Okay, hopefully you've done that. Okay, hopefully you have your answer. So in this case, let me show you what this is. In this case study, what we are looking is actually a retail buying. Let me explain to you why. What we see over here of this level is that there is a weak departure of the level. Look at how price barely even went up. You, you see that, uh, in fact, there was a very strong rejection here. So price didn't take off. The moment price tried to take off, price was slammed back down and then you have this very nice little um, hanging, uh, hangman or pin bar. So price had a very weak departure and price has a tough fight at this level. And even though there's only three candles, you still have to watch out for the departure. You cannot just say that there are three candles at the base of the level and you do not watch the departure. You still need to uh, look at the departure. That was the reason why I chose this case study to help you uh, understand that you need to look at both departure as well as the number of candles. So in this case, the departure is weak, uh, even though there are three candles. 
you see that uh, there's this doji candle over here. So this is your sign that uh, there's a lot of indecision. Uh, so this is also a sign that institutional traders are not pumping a lot of money into this uh, level. They are not buying uh, strongly at this level. And you also see a good mix of uh, bullish and bearish candle. If you look at the subsequent price action over here, you can see that uh, after this candle is a, is a, it's a very nice, uh, you know, like kind of like piercing pattern. And then you get another big uh, bearish and then you have a very nice mix. So in this case, uh, this is a retail entry. It's nothing too uh, explosive. You do not see explosive movement. And therefore, I'll classify this as the retail entry. Or rather, these are retail people buying. So you will want to avoid trading in this kind of scenario. You want to avoid, uh, you know, following uh, so-called discount institute uh, retail traders because uh, there is not much money being backed. Up. But if you know you follow the institutional traders where price move fast, you are on the right side of the market because uh, you are just kind of like piggy bagging uh, of their trades. So that is why you want to identify retail and institutional trading. Now let's go to case study number three. Again, do the same thing. Pause this video. Ask yourself: Is this a institutional or retail entry? Right? Are people buying, are uh, institutionals buying at this level or are retail uh, traders like you and I buying at this level? This one should be really, really clear. This is a very clear example. So hopefully you get it right. Okay, probably you already done that. So let's look at what this is. So this is actually institutional buying. Why? Very simple. This is very clear cut. You see a strong departure of the level, right? It's, it's very clear. You only have about two candles uh, consolidating before price took off. You have large extended uh, range candle. You see that price uh, closes at the top here. Price closes at the top, top, top. And majority of the candles are bullish. So this is as clear as day. This is the kind of uh, institutional buying that you want to identify because this is super clear. These are the how, uh, these are the kind of you know trades or price action that you want to look at and you want to rely on. Let's say you know price will come back to this level. You want to look for entry over here because you know that previously the institutional players were buying at this level. So that's how you can use institutional trading. You know how you can identify institutional institutional trading and use it to trade. Right. But again, you need a strategy. So that's what our MPE uh, trading strategy will do for you. And all that's taught in the free day trading guide. So make sure you check that out. Okay. It's totally free. So let's go to case study number four. So case study number four, same thing. I want you to pause this video. Ask yourself, is this institutional trading or retail trading? Have you done that? Okay. Let's go through the answer. Now the answer for this is that uh, this is retail trading very clear example so because you look at the de departure of this level look at how price departed of this level it's very slow in fact if you were to count the number of candles here uh, i don't really know how you will count it right you might count it differently from me but it is very obvious that it is more than six candles it's definitely more than six candles you can count if you count from here one two three four five, six, seven, eight, you know, no matter how you count, it's still more than six candles and there's very weak departure. You also see a lot of dojis. You can see that over here, there's a series of dojis. You have a kind of like a hangman over here as well. So there's a lot of indecision and the price is closing at the center of the candle body. So there's a lot of indecision and you also see a good mix of uh, bullish and bearish candle. You have, you know, a lot of green, a lot of red candles. So this is clearly a retail uh, buying. So you want to avoid buying into this kind of levels. Now, it, this level might work. You might get a trade that uh, earns you money, right? It's, it's not foolproof, but ideally you would want to stay out of this kind of buying. You want to look for the institutional buying, which I showed you earlier on. Now let's move on to case study number five, this last case study. So hopefully uh, right now you can follow and you know, all these examples really solidify your understanding and you, you know, you are able to identify. So this is the last example. Please pause this video again, then watch it. Okay, so let's talk about this case study number five. In this case, uh, this is actually a institutional buying. Okay, this is a bit tricky. So let me walk you through it in case, you know, you said retail entry, okay, or rather retail buying. Now, there is a very strong departure of the level. You have a piercing pattern over here, but you can see that these three candles over here are not very energetic. They are not really extended range candles because you can see that this is the candle high 
and price is closing roughly in the middle of the uh, range. Only this candle here is closing high and this candle is closing high. So the reason why I chose this case study is I want to show you that sometimes trading is not so clear. It's not so black and white. It's not so obvious like, you know, this kind of scenario, you know, like uh, this retail entry and, you know, this one over here, which is super, super obvious. So if you're in doubt, do not trade it. That's simple, right? Just avoid it. Look for another pair. But I want to show you that um, you do not need to really, you know, like overanalyze. If you think that, you know, it, if it follows the general characteristics of what I mentioned, that there's still a, a strong departure of the level and, you know, uh, you, you, you don't really have a lot of candles consolidating here. And you can see that majority of the candles are bullish. You can just consider this as institutional buying, right? Do not need to overanalyze and ask questions such as how many candles, you know, give me a percentage of majority of the candles. Do you mean majority of the candles are bullish? It must be 80%, must it be 75%, you know, uh, there's really no need for it. Just eyeball it, okay? As you get more experience, you actually practice this, uh, it'll come naturally to you. One look, you can tell that, okay, this is actually institutional buying and most likely, I want to be looking for longs at this level. So that's how you do it. So, I've come to the end of uh, the case study. Sorry for this. This is supposed to be five. Okay, I didn't want to make the video too long. Uh, initially, the plan was to do five price action case studies, but I found it too long. Okay, um, in fact, I think you probably already understand this. Okay, our other video do walk you through more about this concept. So I will leave a link to this uh, other video about institutional buying and selling. Make sure you check out that. This is uh, something that's very important because you always want to be trading with the institutional uh, traders. So as a recap, uh, I showed you how institutional buying and selling looks like. Okay, I gave you two charts, comparison, right? I went through the criteria to identify institutional buying and selling. You want to look at the departure of the level, number of candles, and you want to see whether there's large extended range candle and the, the mix of the candles. Is it mixed or is it all buying or is it all selling? Okay, if you need to go back, just make sure you go back and take some notes. I also did a comparison between uh, institutional buying and selling versus retail buying and selling. I showed you, you know, a side-by-side -side comparison of how one looks and how the other one looks. So if you need, just go back there again. And lastly, I gave you five price action case studies at, that I hope uh, you did, you know, you did it with me. And I hope that you got it right. If you did not, right, feel free to re-watch this video to make sure you knew it, okay? So if not, that's it for this video. As always, if you have any questions, just leave a comment, comment down below. We'll do our best to help you. Right, at the same time, right, please support this channel, right? Please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notification bell because uh, we create a lot of videos like this to help you and you wouldn't want to miss a video that we create, okay? Because all these uh, videos are knowledge that uh, we paid thousands to learn and we are making it free for you. So you wouldn't want to miss any of this. If not, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.